Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman and I'm going to show you how to get started with C Sharp and .NET development using Visual Studio. First, what is Visual Studio and why should you care? Well, I like to think about it as Microsoft Word for programmers. You use Microsoft Word to create a document, you save the document, you use Visual Studio, you write some words in C Sharp or F Sharp or Visual Basic and you make a program. You can get Visual Studio by going to visualstudio.com. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I'm at visualstudio.microsoft.com. You can also just say visualstudio.com and you can download Visual Studio for free. And if you're using it for university or open source work, you can get Visual Studio Community, which is totally free. And that's going to run the Visual Studio installer. And the Visual Studio installer lets you pick the options for Visual Studio that make you happy. It's important to note that you can have multiple versions. I have the standard current version of Visual Studio, and I also have a preview running side by side. So you don't have to worry about the new stuff and the older stuff fighting with each other. So I'm trying different versions. When you install Visual Studio, you're gonna pop up a dialog here that has a list of what are called workloads. And those workloads are the different things that you wanna work on. Maybe you wanna work on web applications, cloud applications, or desktop applications. Perhaps you wanna do mobile development, or maybe you're more interested in game development. It's totally up to you. If you're just getting started, I would probably start with websites and desktop sites. And when you do that, it'll install just the pieces that you need for Visual Studio. Once you've launched into Visual Studio, you'll, you'll show up somewhere like here. Now you can always pick the theme and the color by going tools, theme, I've got dark mode, but you can pick light mode or even Beyonce, if you like the Beyonce theme, which I prefer. You notice here that we've been dropped into a what's new dialog. Visual Studio gets updated often, so we get to learn about the different new features that are included in Visual Studio. So be sure to explore that what's new when it pops up. Now I'm gonna make a quick console application by saying file, new, project. I went file, new, and then project, file, new, project. And that's gonna pop up a dialog with the workloads that I have installed. I can pick all kinds of different .NET applications, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll choose console app. So I'm gonna click console app. I'm gonna ignore some of these other, other options and I'm just gonna say my new console is awesome. It's gonna put it on my D drive. You can put it wherever makes you happy. I'll hit next. There's lots of choices about the different versions of .NET you want. I'm gonna pick the default, which is .NET 8. It has long-term support, which means I won't have to worry about support for a long time. I'll hit Create, and look at that. I automatically have a program.cs, where CS stands for C-sharp file, and console.writeline hello world is already right there. I can make a change, hello new VS friends. And now I'm gonna hit the what I call the play button. This is actually the run button. You can also say debug start debugging. You can press F5, but I'm just gonna press this button and my console app is gonna start up. The console pops up on the screen and look at that. Hello, new VS friends, directly from my console. And then you'll see a little bit of information here about how that application has exited. But now we can see that direct relationship between console.writeline and new VS friends. And if I want, I can even go and do debugging. We're gonna dig into that right now. Now there's a ton of documentation on how to get started with any Microsoft product, with C Sharp, with Visual Studio, and more. You can check all of that out at learn.microsoft.com as I have on my screen right here. Click on product documentation. You can learn about .NET or Visual Studio. If I click on .NET, you've got training, getting started, concepts, videos, a ton of information. I'm gonna start with this tutorial here, which is create your first c -sharp console app within the Visual Studio documentation. Now here, I'm gonna add some code to create a calculator. As I move through this tutorial, I can copy and paste this code directly. So I'm gonna steal this code here, copy it into my clipboard, drop over into Visual Studio. I'm gonna hit Control A, to select everything and then control V for paste. Remember control X, control C, control V is cut, copy, paste. So here I just pasted in, it looks like about 42 lines of C sharp. 
I can use control and scroll on my mouse to make my fonts bigger and smaller. And we'll see some C sharp code here that is going to do console, calculator, and C sharp, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to say build, build solution to see if it builds. And you can see down here we have one succeeded, zero failed, no issues found, looking clean. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and hit run debug and see how that works. Our console will pop up and it says console calculator in C sharp. I'm gonna just have that off to the side and you can notice the code next to it. Type a number, two, type another number, two. Choose an option, add, subtract, multiply. We're gonna hit add, result is four. Press any key to close the calculator app. Super basic, but if you're getting started, if you wanna familiarize yourself with Visual Studio, whether you are an early in career programmer or if you're uh, an oldie like myself, you can go and explore with these tutorials. This is a very simple program. It's just like we said, 40 lines of code sitting in one single program.cs. Let's take a look at what would happen if we added a dependency. So now I'm gonna do some refactoring. I'm gonna edit this code, just delete it. Give it a compile and see if it works. And if it doesn't, we'll learn something. So here we just did a build two succeeded. Let's go ahead and hit debug. Again, we pop up our console, type a number two, type a number two, press an operation A, nothing happened. That's interesting. Probably because I didn't actually output the result. Console dot right line. Oh, look at that. Copilot's popping up some information to help me out with the ghost text. Your result is nice. I'll just hit tab, that looks cool. Let's try again. Hit play, two, two, add. Hey, look at that. That should be a plus, but that's cool because that's the operation that I asked for. So we actually got the right number. It really depends on what that op thing is going to be. And in this case here, do operation, I can actually right click, check this out. I can go directly to that definition. Visual Studio is filled with cool features like this that are code aware. Go to definition, I just jumped in here. Of course, we moved everything into a library, but we didn't go and have A, S, M, and D turn into something like plus, minus, times, and divide which we could do. See how I'm doing a little bit of light refactoring? And then I could go in here and say plus, minus, and divide. Run it again. See our application pop up. You see how you get this experience in Visual Studio of rapid development? It's pretty cool. Two, two, plus, there you go. Your result is two plus two equals four. So Visual Studio has got a ton of featuring for doing refactoring and IntelliSense. You saw me go really fast. Let's take a quick moment and go over a few of those. Visual Studio has a ton of features. It is an IDE, an integrated development environment, which means you don't have to leave Visual Studio to do most of your work. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. There are features like refactoring and IntelliSense. We saw a bit of that earlier when uh, GitHub Copilot used ghost text and provided me intelligent expectations about what I was going to type. You're also going to see things like light bulbs and green squiggles. Code will turn red and green. Let's take a look. In Visual Studio here, you can see this little screwdriver that popped up that's going to offer me suggestions. So for example, it can convert my program to a different style, pop that up. If I am making a mistake, I might see a squiggle like this where it says console doesn't contain a definition for rightly because I spelled right line wrong. I'll click on the light bulb and it'll say, oh, I can change that to right line. So it's kind of like spell check. Show potential fixes, fix it, boom. Now I've removed all of those squiggles. Interestingly enough, those squiggles will also appear in the scroll bar over here. So when you've got an error, you'll be able to see it in this zoomed out scroll bar, which is super cool. So you're getting code cleanup directly. If I wanted to pull things out, I can refactor and say, well, what are some quick actions? Maybe we want to pull that out into a new method. That'd be cool. Lots of features like that inside of Visual Studio to make life easier. 
One of the other things we can do is do interactive debugging. So let's put a breakpoint on this line right here. I'm going to right click and we're going to add a breakpoint. Breakpoint, insert breakpoint. So this is going to put a breakpoint that's going to cause my application to stop running when it reaches that red line. We'll do interactive debugging by hitting start debugging. We'll type in our two to add. Now look, my application has stopped running at that moment, and I can see down here in the corner each of those numbers and the operation live inside of our watch window. We are watching those variables. I could even change one. I could change two to four in real time. Even though I typed two plus two, I changed the variable in memory, and then I'm going to now step over that. Okay, I can step over that line. I can also use a hotkey, I'll press F10. And now, look, the calculator library output value is now six. So I'm doing real interactive debugging. We'll continue, go back to our console, and we'll see, even though I typed two plus two, I changed it to four, and now the result is six. So I'm doing that without having to restart the application. So it's got a world-class debugger, it's fantastic. I really enjoy the time that I get to spend in Visual Studio. Additionally, I've got things like go to definition and peak definition that we saw. So here, while I'm inside of program.cs, I can actually peek at a function that's in an entirely different file. That was a basic example. We went from console.writeline to a calculator, but it was still pretty basic. Let's look at a real app that does real work. I'll go ahead and share my screen. This is actually my personal podcast site. And if we take a look at the Solution Explorer, we see that my app has three projects, not one or two. It has a core web application. You can tell it's a web app by the little world wide web there. And then it has two test projects. You can tell that they're tests because of the little lab beaker icon right there. So we have my tests and then my playwright tests that run the browser interactively. And inside of my application. We've got lots of different classes and lots of different CS files, including multiple pages because it's a Razor Pages application. So we have HTML inside of our CS HTML apps. I can open one of those and show you a mix inside of Razor, C Sharp, and .NET support a feature called Razor that lets you mix and match your C Sharp with your HTML, which is super cool. Now when I hit start without debugging, we're gonna fire up a little local web server. So now I'm running on local host on a high port, and this is my podcast. All of this is running entirely locally, and I can do interactive debugging just like we saw before. So Visual Studio works great for small apps and big giant applications that you'll see in the enterprise or in big businesses. And this is just three projects. I've seen Visual Studio projects with dozens or even hundreds of projects and you can zip around in them just like I'm doing right now. So Visual Studio is a free integrated development environment for schools and for small projects. If you're doing something that is small or you're open source, you can download Visual Studio Community. If you're doing something that's more professional or enterprise, you would get Visual Studio Professional or Enterprise. All of those can be gotten at visualstudio.com right here. And all of them include Copilot free. So check that out download Visual Studio, and join our community because we have a ton of folks that are excited to get you started with Visual Studio, C Sharp, and .NET.